We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show now today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the the government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about why massive volatility is returning to Bitcoin in just the next couple of weeks. Today, we're going to be talking about the major movement that will be coming on Bitcoin any day now. We're going to be talking about a technical indicator called the Bollinger Bands and what it has to say about Bitcoin and its short-term future and we're going to continue talking about how we can build out our portfolios to make as much money as we can in the right way in the responsible way here in this cryptocurrency bull market my name is jeb mcafee i've been working in the cryptocurrency space for going on seven years now and i love helping you guys build wealth it's one of my most enjoyable things to do you know when i grew up i, I was a gamer i played a lot of video games a lot of video games uh probably twenty thousand hours of games there are eight thousand seven hundred and sixty hours in a year for perspective i played a lot of games and so you know i actually taught myself that number because i thought to myself hmm i go through my steam and i see all these different games with over a thousand hours on it man what would happen in my life if instead of spending thousands of hours in video games i put thousands of hours into building relationships and growing my brain and building my business and so about five years ago or so i kind of stopped playing and then i realized whoa God made this awesome game called Life, man. It's oh, it's so incredible. And the rules are all right there in the in the wisdom. Right? So when we understand the way the actual game works, it's a great joy to play. There will be a day where we will have every where we will finally make it, if you will. But for now, we get to play this wonderful game where we're able to build wealth where we're able to be generous to people, where we're able to have joy. And it's really just one of the most satisfying things in my life is being able to build my family and this business and help you guys grow. So really excited to be here today, guys. Um, let's go ahead and read some chat. We've got a lot to cover today. It's Friday. Hashtag Fence Off Friday. If you guys don't know, financial sovereignty is the guiding principle that I use in my life to build wealth, which is quite simply that I need to gain control over those things which are in my possession and faithfully steward them in the way that God would show me to do. And when I've done that in every area of my life, whether it be in reorganizing a bedroom or decluttering a garage or tackling finances or building a business or working on a relation, anytime I have done that, that area of my life has flourished. It has thrived. And I want to share that with you today. Today is Fence Off Friday, and we'll be talking a little bit about that. But let's read some chat. You Are Awesome is in chat. Jason Berry is in chat. Marley, Coin Operator, Satchet, <clears throat> Chasse is in chat. Sweet Benabear12 said, Happy Friday, Jeb and friend. Harmony Hill Homestead's in chat. Say that three times fast. Philly Skills 1428. RJ, Jennifer Lee, B. Me. There you go. Jeff's in chat. The Harmendra Patel is in chat. Abraham Lee is in chat. Said, Good morning, Jeb. Uh, Maori 94 g Bitcoin Tahoe, Bob Riley said, hang tight, gang. We're going to be blasting off soon enough. I agree. Ave Latin is in chat. Uh, Brady Thompson, Christopher called out. Joel Bollier again. Theresa per uh, Perret is in chat. Said, good morning, Jeb. Give us some knowledge. Okay. Michael Parsons is in chat. Renee, Herman Barbara, and Randy Tanner. Everybody in chat. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Very much excited to be here today. Let's get... Oh, so excuse me. I'm so sorry. Let's get started. We've got a lot to cover. Right now, Bitcoin is currently trading at $67,443. It is up a quarter of a percent over the last 24 hours. Well, no, <laughs> had a bit of a corrective movement right as I was saying that. We are basically sideways in the last 24 hours. We've been down 4% in the last seven days, and that is something that is good. Let's just pause here for a second and reflect on the fact that Bitcoin has been taking a corrective movement. Excuse that, guys. I apologize. The... Um, I have to update the trading view, so I got to renew it. So it thinks I'm on the basic plan right now. I'm going to fix that. I was about to fix it before we went live, and I realized, oh, wait a minute. It's going to take a minute, so I'm going to do that. Um, but anyway, it's you know, the cool thing about, you know, be entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, being an entrepreneur, I haven't had to pay for trading view in six years because I've had, a, I've had an affiliate link down there that I never mention 
I talk about it if you want. I mean, it's down there. I never mention it, but when you guys sign up, there's like this coins feature in TradingView. It's kind of cool. There's this coins feature, and you can use it to redeem TradingView for free. So I've had free TradingView for like six years because of the channel. I just have to go in there and spend some of the coins. It's actually really funny. I, this is a complete side note, but just bear with me here. Sean Mack over at Luxalgo also has the same link. And so a couple of years ago, he was down here at our, at our um, headquarters, and we were talking, and I showed him how many coins I had on TradingView, and he showed me how many coins he had on TradingView. And I'm pretty sure the two of us <clears throat> are tied for first and second place for anybody that's ever referred people to TradingView <laughs> because we've done so much charting. So that was pretty funny. We were kind of in a race there for a while. Anyway, on Bitcoin, we've got this amazing bull market that has transpired over the course of the last 16 months and change. We have rallied almost 400%, and many people are wondering now, is it too late to buy into Bitcoin? No, it is not. I'll just put that out there very, very simply. It is not too late to get into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an incredibly valuable asset, and I firmly believe that we'll be rallying to at least $100,000 during the course of this bull market, probably higher. I'm also very confident by the end of the decade that Bitcoin will be trading at at least a quarter of a million dollars, potentially as high as $500,000. And within a decade, I think that Bitcoin could very easily be at $1 million. So is it too late to buy into Bitcoin? No. I think that you can quite confidently 10x your money in Bitcoin over the course of the next 10 years. That is not the kind of thing that you're going to find in the stock market. The United States stock market was on an absolute meteoric rally. For the last 10 years and it rallied 200 percent that's a 3x i think in the next 10 years bitcoin could 10x am i saying don't buy the stock market absolutely not that would be a foolhardy thing to say you should be maxing out your iras you should be taking 401ks with a match you should be investing for retirement in the stock market and anybody who tells you otherwise is a fool and doesn't understand that it is one of the most powerful wealth building tools in the history of mankind please do buy the stock market also that being said, leaving Bitcoin out of your portfolio, I am also convinced is foolhardy because of its potential and because of the fact that it has been institutionalized in American finance by the exchange traded funds that launched just a few weeks uh, and months ago. When those actually launched, Bitcoin was trading at $44,000. Now an all-time high was set $30,000 higher than that at 73 k So I'm very convinced that Bitcoin is going to have a huge 2024 and 2025, and we are eventually going to see a top, and it is going to startle some of you guys. So if you're, too, um, if you're very risk-averse, then you can certainly take, you know, you can certainly start to pull out at like 100K if you're going to be selling Bitcoin for this cycle. As for me and my house, we are not going to be selling Bitcoin at all during this rally. I have made that mistake before. I have sold Bitcoin before, and I am continually hitting myself for it um, because it's just not a good idea. I'm going to hold Bitcoin basically forever. I, I honestly don't even know if I will ever spend the Bitcoin that I hold. It may go to my children. I'm only 23 years old. One of them is, you know, they're both still in diapers, guys. But this is this this Bitcoin may be for my kids and my grandkids is how long I'm planning on holding it. And that's what most people are doing at this point. There is a cult like following around crypto. And that is part of the reason that it's worth a trillion and a half dollars and still appreciating. So when is this major movement going to come and how do we prepare for it? Well, there's a video that went out on the channel yesterday. I would encourage you to go and watch that if you have not already. But I will kind of go over the premise here briefly. I think that Bitcoin is going to have um, some sideways action over the next several weeks moving into the halving event. Depending on who you ask, the halving event is either going to be on the 19th of April or the 22nd of April. Uh, depending on how you calculate the block times and the uh, block heights and everything, it moves around a couple of days. But generally speaking, the third week of April, we know that the halving is going to occur. Are there going to be any technical difficulties with it? No, it's going to go off without a hitch. Bitcoin is one of the most bug-proof pieces of code ever created in the history of the world. It is one of the most stable pieces of digital architecture made by mankind to date. So is there going to be a technical difficulty with it? No, it's going to go off completely fine, and there's going to be absolutely no worries there. We have absolutely no reason to believe there's going to be any kind of concern about that. So if you hear somebody sounding the alarm like, oh my goodness, Bitcoin's going to go down with the halving, the halving's going to break it. No, it's literally all the halving does is change one little tiny section of code, which changes the block reward from 6.25 to 3.125. It is a very, very simple change in the grand scheme of things with very profound effects, but it's not this giant rework to the way Bitcoin works. All it is is changing the block reward, which is one variable. It's one number in the cryptographic hashing functions and in the blockchain itself from 6.25 to 3.125. That's all it is. It's very simple. It's not super complicated. It's not going to break anything. It's going to be just fine. 
So Bitcoin's going to be fine. There's not going to be any technical difficulties. It's going to be okay. What is going to happen is it's going to lead more than likely to some volatility. We don't know at this point whether we're going to have bullish or bearish volatility, but we do know for quite a degree of certainty that we're going to see some kind of volatility. On the one hand, we have a major symmetrical triangle pattern forming right now and when that symmetrical triangle pattern finishes playing out it is going to most likely lead to a major breakout that's just kind of the way things go when you're on bitcoin symmetrical triangle patterns break out and lead to volatility we're going to talk about the bollinger band side of things also here in a minute and on the other hand bitcoin is also uh, expecting quite a degree of volatility because we've never seen a having event take place on the chart i gotta fix that I, we have never seen Bitcoin take, excuse me, we've never seen a having take place on Bitcoin this, um, uh, we've never seen a having event take place on Bitcoin after we've already hit the cycle top, after we've already hit the new all-time high, rather. The last Bitcoin um, having event took place right here in May, May 11th, I think it was, 2020. I remember it. Bitcoin was in the four digits. Now it's in the five digits, pushing six digits, right? Bitcoin blasted through there about four, five, six months later to all-time high territory. But Bitcoin actually kind of traded sideways through the halving for a little while. A couple months later, if we zoom in here, a couple months later, we saw um, Bitcoin go through a pretty large rally. But again, it was a few months later. Bitcoin would rally 35% in four weeks. From there, we'd end up going into a big rally. But the bull market actually kicked off post-halving. The last halving before that was in 2016. This will be the second halving I've ever been here for. I've been here for almost a decade. This is only the second halving that I'm ever going to have been through. The halving before that took place back here. I think it was in June of 2016. Bitcoin pretty quickly went on a major rally, but it was still well below all-time high. So we've never seen the cycles move this quickly where we are blasting towards all-time high this quickly. The time between the $20,000 all-time high and the eventual breaking of $20,000 was 1,100 days. The time between the all-time high at $69,000 and the eventual breaking, um, which happened just a few weeks ago, was only 861 days. So we're compressing time scales here. Bitcoin is moving to the upside even faster than it has in the past, which shows us that the market is more is stronger and more resilient than it has been in the past. Bitcoin is going to succeed. The question is, how is the market going to react to a halving event that takes place after we've hit the all-time high? We don't have a historical precedent for that, so we have to be, really be careful about saying anything for certain. The reason I can tell you for, for basically for certain that there's nothing going to happen, no technical difficulties are going to be a problem when the halving event comes, on, uh, comes to pass is because we've seen it happen four times. It's happened before. And also, it's a very simple thing. It's very easy to dictate, to understand the way, it, you know, the, 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 there's not many um, failure points. There's not very many failure points. So, um, the fact of the matter is, Bitcoin is going to have just a, f a fine time having uh, when the halving event comes, but there's probably going to be a good degree of volatility. And I think that volatility may immediately lead Bitcoin into a correction to the downside where we are able to buy around $58,000 and bounce. If that doesn't happen, that's fine. Hopefully your dollar cost averaging. Remember what we want to be doing with all of these markets that we're trying to get into is dollar cost average on a weekly basis. Some of you guys dollar cost average on a daily basis, but at least on a weekly basis, I think that's what I would, excuse me, not I think that is what we teach. That is what we recommend is a weekly basis every Friday purchasing into the um the markets and then if we go into a corrective movement you have a bag of cash and then you deploy that cash to buy the dip you're not saying i'm not going to buy anything until the market goes down no you're trying to control the market one of the first principles of financial sovereignty is understanding that there are some things you can control and there are some things you can't control you can control the person in the mirror you can't control the person across the dinner table from you i say that again you can control the person in the mirror but you can't control the person in the prius next to you in traffic you can control the person in the mirror. You can't control the person that is cursing at you online. I get a lot of those people, right? You, you can't control that. So part of being financially sovereign is understanding what you can and cannot control. You cannot control where the market goes. What you can control is how you react when the market goes there. You can control how well you are prepared for in the event that the market does such and such. You can't control the individual in the Prius next to you cut you off in traffic you can't control them what you can control is that you are paying attention and you made sure that there was a good following distance and you slammed on the and you made sure you were safe you can't control what you do you can't control them in the same way we cannot control the market but we can control how prepared we are when the market does something we can control if the market goes into a correction that we have cash on the side and we buy some all right so 
We're not going to sit here and say, I'm going to sit on my hands. I'm going to be out of the market until it crashes to this level because I say Bitcoin's going to go to 40,000. No. No, the market doesn't care what you think. The market does not give two cents about your two Satoshis. It does not care a lick. So quit trying to control the market. If the market crashes, then be in a position to deploy cash. The people that got rich in 2008 were not the people that predicted 2008. You know why? Because most of the people that predicted 2008 were sitting there crunching numbers all day instead of actually making investments. The people that got rich in 2008 were not the people that predicted 2008. The people that got rich in 2008 were the people that had a million bucks on the side and they bought real estate. They're the people that had $20,000 in cash and they bought the stock market. They are the people that had a, a, that had a cash flowing business with no debt so they were not exposed and then they were able to dump cash into the market. The people that made money in 2008 were the, was the construction company that had no debt, high profit margins, kept a giant pile of cash, and so they were able to run in the red for, th for 18 months and not lay anybody off while all of their competition was going belly up and downsizing their workforce by two-thirds and three-quarters. And then on the other side, they had three times the market share that they did two years before. They grew 300% because they didn't have to lay anybody off. And they were willing to take jobs at a loss for 18 months just so they stayed in business and so that they would beat the competition. The people that are not exposed are the people that succeed in a crash. And the people that have cash on the side are those that are able to make purchases when the market goes down. I think Warren Buffett says it like this. When the tide goes out, you can see who's skinny dipping. Right now, when the tide goes out, let's make sure that you're not. Let's make sure that you have some cash. And let's make sure that if the market does go through a crash, that you have the ability to buy the dip. Now, I talked about the Bollinger Bands. I want to discuss those a little while, for a little bit. The Bollinger Bands were created by an individual named John Bollinger. And John Bollinger was a technical analyst, and he created these bands to analyze something called volatility in the cryptocurrency markets. Let's see. Uh, give me a bit of difficulties here. Hang on one second. But anyway, John Bollinger, as I said, was a technical analyst, and his thesis was that if he could understand the volatility in the market, it would give him some kind of idea of where the market is going to go next. Give me one second. Trading View is making me reapply them here. So the purpose of the Bollinger Bands, like I said, it shows us how volatile the market is. And one of the core principles of Bollinger Bands and of markets in general is that markets are cyclical. Something we teach in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. You can check out CT2A with the link in the description box down below. Markets are cyclical. They move from uptrends to downtrends. They go up and they go down. There's a There's a... There's a, 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 dual, a dual nature to markets. They go up and they go down. They're green and they're red. They're always right. Markets are always right. Have you noticed that? The markets are always right. They don't ever go left. The markets are always right. You're not if you think that you can control the markets. The markets aren't, aren't ever left. They're always right. So just listen to the markets and do what they say. Be opportunistic. But anyway, <laughs> jokes aside, they are also cyclical. They go through periods of high volatility and through periods of low volatility. And when you're in one, you can bet the other one's coming soon. When the market's going up, you can bet there's going to be a drop soon. When the market's going down, you can bet there's going to be a rally soon. When the market's green, you can bet it's going to be red soon. When the market's red, you can bet it's going to be green soon, as long as it's a healthy, growing market. We're talking about healthy markets that generally move up and to the right. They're moving up in life, and they're always right. Like your annoying neighbor. I'm just kidding. Anyway. The market has been decreasing in volatility quite dramatically here over the course of the last couple of, goodness gracious, trading view. I'm going to. I know it. I'm running a stream here. Anyway, the markets are going to uh, go through dramatic um, bursts of volatility, and then they're going to drop in volatility. The, vol the Bollinger Bands are dictated by a two standard deviation uh, um, removal from a 20 simple moving average in the center. So if you go into, go into Bollinger Bands and you look at them, you can see that the uh, the standard deviation is two. So if you don't know what a standard deviation is, then I will show you standard deviation. If you'll remember back to, oh, I don't know, ninth grade, standard deviation looks like this. This is a standard standard deviation. Yes, that's a thing. <laughs> so you have the standard deviation that is one, that is 34.1% away from the center line in either direction. Then you have the second standard deviation, which is another 13.6% away from the center line. So in total, you are uh, 47. 
seven percent in either direction which means it's about 95 percent of the tr of the price action fits within two standard deviations about 99.8 percent of the price action fits within three standard deviations here it is right here actually 68 percent is one standard deviation two standard deviation is 95 percent three standard deviations is 99 percent this is just kind of the way that this works in statistics okay cool awesome now when we go back to bitcoin we're working on two standard deviations for bollinger bands if you set it to one standard deviation it looks like this and it's significant less useful it is kind of useful because you can really start to see the strength of the trend so i don't want to completely write it off but it's not as useful and if you go to three which is um three standard deviations man trading view is not working with me right now it's giving me that glitch now where i can't open the cog that doesn't have anything to do with the plan thing that just has to do with trading view being weird oh nice deleted everything here we go all right Let's see if i can get trading view to cooperate with me always likes to do this when i'm live never does it when i'm off camera all right let me remove all of this and we will get the Bollinger Bands cooperating here. Now, the Bollinger Bands, if I may, yes, I want to refresh the page. Thank you. Wow. I'm sorry, guys. Trading View is giving me a lot of difficulties right now. And this doesn't have anything to do with the pop-up that we were seeing earlier. This is just a genuine glitch. Anyway, I will show you in a minute. But the point is, I will kind of describe it because I've done this a hundred thousand times with Bollinger Bands. I'm not sure why Trading View isn't cooperating here. I'll see if I can fix it while I'm talking. The purpose of Bollinger Bands shows us the volatility. And it shows us that the vast majority of the price action fits within the actual Bollinger Bands themselves. Whenever something is outside of the Bollinger Bands, then of course it is in the 120th of market movement. And that is the outlying, um, outlying, here we go. That is the outlying price action. So for example, here, if we were to hide all of our charts and all of our charting and just look at the Bollinger Bands, there's only a few times where the market's going to get outside of the Bollinger Bands. Right now, Bitcoin is completely inside of the Bollinger Bands. And when we are inside of the Bollinger Bands like this and trading sideways, and as you can see, the Bollinger Bands are constricting on themselves, are getting very narrow, that shows us that we are in a period of low volatility. Well, because markets are cyclical, we know that when volatility is low, volatility will soon be high. For example, volatility was dramatically converging on itself right here. The bottom Bollinger Band was rapidly increasing. The upper Bollinger Band was starting to converge on itself. And right about here, we had very, very tight Bollinger Bands, as you can see. If we were to come back one, you would see it even more so. The Bollinger Bands were very tight at this point in the history of Bitcoin. And so that is where we would start to use the Bollinger Bands to predict, okay, some volatility is incoming. Similarly here, if we saw this, we would see that the Bollinger Bands are very tight. So we'd be able to predict that some volatility is incoming. Similarly here, if we're able to see the Bollinger Bands are very tight, we'd be able to predict that volatility is incoming. Volatility came in. As you can see, the Bollinger Bands widen right here. They're very helpful predictive tools, these technical indicators. This one is decades, decades, decades old. They start to constrict, and then they widen, as you can see. And they start to constrict, and then they widen. And they're widening and widening and widening and widening and widening and widening, and now they're constricting, and we're moving into the present day. And so what happens, based on the teaching I just gave you, when the Bollinger Bands are constricted like this? Well, generally, they're going to widen. How do they widen? Well, the way that they widen is by the <clears throat> breakout of the market. And so what we're experiencing here is a period of low volatility. And because markets are cyclical, we're likely to see a period of very high volatility coming again very soon. So let's make sure that we are prepared for volatile movements, that we are not over leveraged, and that we are in a position to buy the dip should one arise and we are in a position to continue dollar cost averaging in case one doesn't guys we've got almost 500 people watching and only 92 likes let's see if we can't get the likes up i really appreciate all of you for tuning in i do want to let you know that today's stream is brought to you in part by nordvpn make sure to go to the link in the description box down below or go to nordvpn.com forward slash jeb and sign up today and get a two-year plan because when you do you will be getting access to a software that is going to protect you while you browse online keep you safe and help you to succeed because one of the worst things that could ever happen to you in your wealth building journey is to have somebody come and steal it and if somebody steals your cryptocurrency because they hacked into your coinbase account or your crypto.com account or something there's really no recourse it, it sucks but there's really absolutely nothing that you can do about it the only thing you can do about it is present is to prevent it from ever happening in the first place so make sure to go to nordvpn.com forward slash jeb sign up today and protect yourself for the duration of the bull market for under 200 dollars. really appreciate all of you tuning in Harmony Hill Homestead said, lost my job a few years back and incurred debt to live, praying to make some dents in it this market cycle. Love it. Love to hear it. I am all for you guys getting out of debt. Debt is slavery. 
It is stupid and it is slavery. I'm not saying you're stupid if you have to take it out. What I'm saying is that carrying debt is a burden. It is a ball and chain around your neck, around your uh, ankle. It is a it is slavery. It is bondage. It is not control. It is somebody else being in control of your finances, not you. So make sure that if you guys are in debt, that you use some of the proceeds to pay it off. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's mortgage debt. I don't care. You, you don't. The best interest rate you'll ever get is zero. Oh, well, I've got 2.25%. Yeah. Get zero. That's a better interest rate. You're going to save a lot of money and you're going to sleep better at night. Jeb, would you not sell near the top using the FIB levels, then buy some more Bitcoin during the bull market? No, I'm just going to build a business that makes a bunch of money, which is what we're doing. And I'm going to deploy more money. I've, I've, got, um, I've got capital in Bitcoin right now that has been in Bitcoin for years and years and years. And when the market goes down, I'm just going to buy more. That's what I'm going to do. Just going to just going to deploy more. Just going to put more in. I'm not going to sell the top and buy in. Um, with the altcoins, I'm going to follow what most of you guys are doing. Um, as far as I was going to do it anyway, but I talked to you guys and then it's, uh, you're seeing it. But um, yeah, uh, there's going to be, um, sorry, I lost track. You guys said something in chat, threw me off. Um, goodness gracious, what was I saying? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> We're going to be deploying more capital into Bitcoin and loading up our bags even more then. People are talking about a big quake. Earthquake. Today's earthquakes in Pennsylvania. Interesting. 3.0 magnitude six days ago. Huh. Is everybody all right? Is there news out about that? Somebody said there was an earthquake Earthquake right now in... Does anybody actually know how to spell Pennsylvania? I know I don't. <laughs> magnitude 4.8 earthquake. One mile from... Tewksbury, New Jersey. Huh. Interesting. Well, I hope everybody's okay. Dang. All right. We've got a couple of super chats. Let's go ahead and read those. Um, Joe Kedgley-Aon in chat said, buy Bitcoin mining stock before or after having. Buy the... So, here is the... Let me just... I'm going to read something to you. These are the... This is what I call the financial sovereignty way. And you guys are going to be hearing a lot more about this in the coming years. First thing you have to do to become financially sovereign is forsake everything you currently think you know and choose fence off. After that, you have to you have to immediately cut all your spending to be below your income and you have to mandate that from here on out, we are going to be in a profit. There are a few exceptions to that, but not because we love Target. Not because we love Starbucks. Not because we like our fancy car. Somebody's, you know, got a terminal illness and we can't help it. Okay, I, I get it. Um, you know, you're, you're a business and you're intentionally running on a, on a runway for 18 months because you're trying to three extra market cap. Okay, I get it. For the average individual, we are not living below our means, above our means. I'm sorry, period. Step three, we build a budget. Step four, we build a starter emergency fund. Step five, we leverage positive, positive cash flow and pay off all of the debt that we have other than the mortgage. After that, we're going to save a fully funded three to six month emergency fund, depending on how much, uh, how volatile your income is. After that, we're going to invest 15% of your household income for retirement. After that, you're going to pay off your house. After that, you're going to invest for wealth generation in crypto stocks, real estate, art, underwater basket weaving, whatever it is. And in step 10, you are going to um, give lavishly and live an awesome life. So on that trajectory, I ask a few questions. One, are you living below your means? Two, are you living on a budget that is specific to that month? Uh, three, have you paid off all of your consumer debt? Four, have you invested for retirement? Five, are you uh, have you built that full on, fully funded three to six months emergency fund? Six and um, six and seven at the same time, you're building wealth after the retirement income, and you are paying off your house at the same time. Have you done all those things before you're buying individual mining stocks? Have you done that? In crypto, what that means is, have you bought Bitcoin for the long run and put it away as retirement before you're buying every single little penny stock or penny coin, penny altcoin? Are you? What is the, what, have you followed the steps in the right order, right? Have you done it in the right order? If you've done those things, then, and you know what you're doing, then picking mining stocks or, or single stocks, fine, go for it. But please make sure that you're buying the market. Please make sure you're buying 
Bitcoin, please make sure that you're out of consumer debt and working on getting out of mortgage debt. Please make sure you have a weekly, sorry, monthly budget. Please make sure that you're living below your means. Before you do any of those things, excuse me, if you have not done any of those things, then let's not be buying individual stocks. After we've done those things and we have mastered those steps, because I firmly believe that what we are called to is to master the stage that we are in before we move on to the next stage. That is where you will be successful. So before or after the halving, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be buying mining stocks at all right now. I'm not sure what the rationale is for buying mining stocks when the miners are about to take a 50% cut to their income. That sounds like a great reason to not buy mining stocks, to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm sure there's probably a rationale there. I think that the halving event helps Bitcoin, really hurts the miners. I don't envy being a miner. In 20 years, it won't make a difference because they're going to be making all their money from fees anyway. But for right now, I do not envy them. Um, if you're going to buy mining stocks, I would say buy it six months after and see who comes out of the fire and skate. You know, that, that's what I would say. Great question, though. Bryn X Motorsports said, new to crypto and your channel. Learned a lot in the last few weeks from your advice. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. Thank you. Got another super chat also. Cryptofer in chat said, hey, love that you're with Jesus. Praise God. Verge. Out on the verge of the rest of our lives tonight. Who knows that song? Man, Verge. Oh, my gosh. What happened, man? Woo! It's at rank number 370. I haven't heard that name. At the... Verge. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Said Obi-Wan Kenobi. I've not heard this name in a long time. I remember Verge. I remember it. Oh, I remember Verge, all right. Shoot, man. It was worth something for like a day. What happened? man? How long has it been since it's been in the top 100? I have not heard of Verge in years. Years. What are they doing now? What? Please don't. I, unless you know something that I don't, and I could be missing something, please don't. I, I'm i so sad to see that Verge is at 400. Unstoppable Domains is great. What in the world? Yeah, I don't. I would not buy it. I mean, it's a penny. It's it's a great gamble. I, why would? Goodness gracious. Okay. I. It's it's market cap is just in the gutter. Jeez, man. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It, I mean, you can gamble on it. You can put a penny stock kind of investment into a moon bag into it. But yeah, whatever. I don't know. That's a uh, man. A lot of people are talking about the about the earthquake. Looks like four point nine in New Jersey. Interesting. Mine was job loss, then parents in the hospital. Now helping them. It's peanut butter every workday at lunch. Hey man, rice and beans, beans and rice until you get out of the debt. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that's happened. There are so many people that have been hit really badly by circumstance, and uh, there are definitely things that are not their fault. Um, yeah. All right. Financial sovereignty or nada? Screaming Jerry Lee said that earthquake was crazy. I'm in New Jersey. I did not know you could. I did not know there were earthquakes in New Jersey. Wait, in several states in the same time, Massachusetts shook our house. Interesting. So they're reporting earthquakes in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. Let's see. Here's where we bust out the geopolitical analysis. Let's do it. Hope nobody was hurt. Pennsylvania and Massachusetts are quite far away from each other, actually. So it wasn't the same earthquake. Huh. Weird. Well, give me a minute. I don't want to freak anybody out. But for the Christians that are watching, Jesus does say that one day, we don't know when that's going to be. It might be a thousand years from now. I'm not saying it's right now. But one day, there will be earthquakes and eclipses and wars and rumors of wars and famines and pestilence. And that will signal... That will signal the coming of the end. 
I'm not saying that we're in the end times right now. I have no idea whether we are or not. <laughs> I've got no clue. It could be it could be tomorrow. It could be a thousand years from now. Um, but it is interesting. It is interesting. Hope everybody's okay. What I will say is that as I have told you over and over and over again, <sighs> all success in life begins with a personal and daily walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day, every tongue will confess and every knee will bow to him. And we had better be on the right side of that. I will say that. I read a quote this morning that will offend some, and that's okay. It's from Paul Washer. He said, we must also discard the idea that there is some way to preach the gospel without scandal or offense. We must, we must keep to heart that we are not seeking a truce with the world, but we are demanding the world's allegiance to Christ. We are not begging for the world's approval, but we are giving it an ultimatum. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Paul Washer. I want you to come to Christ because he loves you, but I do also want you to know that there is a consequence for not coming to him. All right, let's read some more chat. Baby Jesus needs to play whack-a-mole with the reset button. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't I can't tell you for sure whether it's the end or not. I don't I don't necessarily think it is, but it is uh hopefully everybody's okay. Hopefully everybody's okay. All right, we're gonna read some chat before we wrap it out. Really appreciate all of you for tuning in. Really appreciate all of you for tuning in. Um, anybody else feel that? Become more frequent and intense, it says. Yes, it does talk about that. So are you saying Jesus called the top? No, I'm not saying Jesus. I mean, Jesus knows everything. He knows when it's going to come, but I'm not saying that he's he's called it where we all know. Um, isn't Crypto Lifer out there too? I think he is. I think he is up there in, in, uh, the, in the new world. The new world. The, the north. Um, New England. That's what I'm trying to say. New England. All right. We've got a lot to come, guys. There's a lot of volatility coming on Bitcoin, and I'm really excited to see how it's going to um, how it's going to impact everything. As far as buying miners, I'm not sure I would buy miners right now. I don't see the purpose in that. Kree Kong said 476 viewers, 90 likes. Don't be self, don't be cheap. At least like the content if you find it useful. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap it out here in the next couple of minutes. So any chat you want me to read, do it. Uh, go ahead and speak now or hold your peas until Monday. This is a big, fast, this is a big, fast um, rally. Me, I'm that Prius, Prius driver, Jennifer Lee said. <laughs> Hi, Jeb. Love your cha. Try contacting you through support. Haven't had a response for your coaching scheduling. I'm so sorry, Richard Keeler. We're on that. We've been we've been doing our interesting. Shoot us a, shoot us an email support at cryptojeb.com. I don't know why that wouldn't why we wouldn't have gotten to that. Um Yeah, Richard, did you sign up for it? We'll check that right now. Let me I will check that right now. You guys will see me do some customer service. Love you guys. I hate it when things don't work out for you guys and it's not quality. I that absolutely makes me livid. I just not at anybody, just at myself. I'm like, why didn't why didn't something not work? Should have worked everything fine. When you bought financial coaching, it should have given you a Calendly link that automatically connects to my calendar. Let me see if I can find you by your name. Richard Keeler, let's see. Give me one second, guys. I don't want to leave any of you guys. Richard Ramsey. Richard Keeler, would your name, would you have signed up under your name? I'm looking through my list of clients here. I don't see you. Yeah. We'll figure something out. I don't. I have a Richard, but not Keeler. I'm not going to say last name because that's confidential, but first names are. Yeah. So I don't, don't see you in here. Not sure what happened. Make sure to go ahead and uh, shoot us an email, supportercryptojeb.com. Richard Keeler, so sorry that happened to you. I'm not sure what's going on. We will get that um, we will get that ironed out as quickly as we possibly can. 
Your thoughts on the several weeks ahead? What's the current? What, what is the current state of the market? I believe that the market is going to have an explosive rally for the rest of this year. I think that it is going to be a very, very bullish year for Bitcoin and for stocks. And I think that if you are, um, if you are invested in this market, you're going to be glad that you are. Quite simply, I think that's kind of the long and short of it. Um, yeah. So, guys, definitely appreciate all of you tuning in. Also, make sure to check out Blowfin. Uh, if you check out this on screen, when you deposit on Blowfin right now, now you got to go sign up. There's a link in the description box down below through uh, Monday, I think it is. You're going to be getting an instant 10% cash back. Sorry, just a 10% cash back on your deposit with up to a two uh, up to $200. So this, this is only for the first 100 users that do this. But when you deposit money into your futures account, you'll be getting a 10% instant cash back. Way better than your dumb credit cards. So go ahead and sign up for Blowfin with the link in the description box down below. Make 10% on your money instantly. Deposit $2,000, get $200. Um, and uh, yeah, get access to an awesome cryptocurrency exchange called Blowfin. Great exchange. Links are in the description box down below. I'm going to read chat for just a second more, and then we're going to wrap it out. Jeb, you rock. You were such a breath of fresh air. Happy Friday, my friend. Well, thank you, face value. Happy Friday to you as well. Crypto ATA floating away. All right. Are you going to see the solar eclipse? We'll see partial. It'll be a partial solar eclipse here in Florida. But uh, we will uh, We'll definitely go outside and look at it for sure. As far as try and block the sun <laughs> with our hands. Dog Seville said, thanks for all your videos. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it out. I hope all of you have enjoyed today's stream. Greatly looking forward to seeing all of you on Monday. As I said, guys, remember all success in life and all salvation in life begins with a personal and daily walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't walk with him, I highly encourage you to seek a pastor or reach out to us at supportercryptojeb.com. We'll talk to you about the gospel. Um, Christ is the way. He's the only way. He's the only way to the Father. There is no other way. Anyone who says there's another way are wrong. There's no other way to salvation than him. And through a personal relationship with him, you will find the joy and fulfillment in life that you've been looking for. You won't find it anywhere else until you find him. And I've had the great pleasure of preaching the gospel to a few of you guys that have asked me in coaching. I typically don't bring it up unless you guys do because I don't want to intrude or anything. But a couple of people have asked me, you know, why? You know, what? A couple, somebody asked me in coaching. They're like, Jeb, like, how do you figure out all this stuff at a young age? I said, look, I didn't figure out crap. I'm horrible at this. It was God. You know, I was, I, uh, most of what I teach is just the Bible applied to the modern world because um, the, the, God's word is timeless. So if you're interested in hearing about the gospel and hearing about how we can have eternal life, um, I, I will tell you, you are not a mortal being. Your fleshly body here, the, this vessel that we inhabit, it will die. But your spirit is immortal. If you've never been told that it is true. But through one decision, a, a, a test with one question on it, you get to decide where that spirit of yours, which is you, your personality, your character, your train of thought, will spend eternity. Um, and I'm here to tell you that it can spend an eternity in the worst place conceivable or the greatest place conceivable. And I would love to join, I would love for you to join me and the other believers in heaven. Um, the question on that test is, will you give your life to Christ and lay it down and let him be in the driver's seat for the rest of your life? If you answer yes to that and you give your life to him, and you walk with other believers, you will be saved. And I beg you, please, 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 please do. Please do. Please. You will remember I said this. I hope it's a fond memory. Hopefully everybody in New Jersey and Massachusetts and wherever those earthquakes are happening is safe. We'll be praying for you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. We're going to wrap it out. Before we do, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.